they might not want to hear it, but it's good feedback for us, isn't it? With it? <laughs> Hi, I'm Teresa Moore, and I'm here today with Laura Wells, who is from Scotland. She flew in yesterday, so we're here in Los Angeles in our Studio City webcast center. And Laura is a psychic and a medium. In fact, Laura was voted in 2008, tell me that, most um, popular female psychic medium. So we've flown Laura out here because we're going to start to introduce her to the American market with her extraordinary psychic and medium skills. Um, so today I'm just doing a little interview with you so you can learn a bit about Laura, her background, and um, some of the exciting things that we're going to be doing here um, on the webcast and with Laura. Laura has taken these national gifts and not only turn it into a profession, but she excels, loves it, and is passionate about mm -hmm. it, integrating it into your lifestyle, and also teaching others how they can use it for themselves. That's right. It's, it's the whole learn to use yourself and that ability it resides in us all in, in different levels and find your power within that. Excellent. And you live the best life that you potentially possibly could lead. You know, why live miserably with everything going wrong when you can use all the tools that God gave you and have a wonderful life and be happy? Well, I'm living. So, yeah. tell me, when did you discover your psychic gifts? I was four. Four? Four years old. Okay. Um, I've actually, I don't know if this is relevant, but I think I've tied it into it. When I, um, I got up during the night um, and I crossed the landing and the lights were out in the hall and I fell down the stairs. And when I looked up, the letter box opened and there was eyes, a pair of eyes, kind of greeny coloured eyes looking at me through the letter box. Of course I didn't oh hysterical. My God. And I was <laughs> hysterical not because of not because I'd, I'd fallen down all the, the full flight of stairs, but because the last thing I expected was the letter box to come up because the stairs went down into the hall right where the front door was. And it was such a my God. And of course my dad came running through through the food because I, you know, it was his, somebody at the door, and he threw the door open. And there was nobody there. Now, knowing what I know now, it was obviously a guide or some sort of protector, you know, in, you know, over the other side. Uh, you didn't freak out when you saw these green eyes looking. I at was you? freaking out the eyes. It wasn't for the fact I fell down the stairs, but to this day, I still sleep with the whole light on <laughs> <laughs> because I never want my children going through that, you know. Um, mainly because when it's dark, your mind's eye sees more. So I saw this with my mind's eye, ah. and not with my physical eyes, hence my dad opened the door and he physically couldn't see it, and I well, saw that's it. That's a very important yeah. comment, so learning how to use your mind's eye yep. for these intuitive gifts Absolutely. versus our linear or physical eyes. Absolutely, you see much more, and of course the separation then started to take place, I was seeing a distinction, a difference, and my life then began to, it was what I see, what I, what, I, what I, when I say saw, not with my eyes, but what I saw with my mind's eye. Mm -hmm. And my mum gradually became to just sit back and watch, because if I reacted, I would start crying half an hour before there was a phone call. And my mum would take the phone call and it would be something really awful had happened. Um, I would drive away from people, even in the back of the car, my parents would be, one of the parents would be driving, and I knew I wasn't going to see them again. You know, wow. I saw um, things even with animals and some things that they did, like maybe get run over on the road and then next <coughs> thing it would be run over on the road. And in, I suppose more incredibly now is that maybe it's a choice in, in my head. I'm very good at seeing good things. A lot of people say, oh, I've been warned. What if I had a bad dream about something? So it's like a warning. But I see good things. So you've things. actually first, uh, at that experience at four, you learned the difference between seeing with your eyes and seeing with your mind. Yeah. And then you started to develop a process to condition your mind to attract or to focus on positive experiences instead of negative experiences. Yes, the, how your brain interprets all that information. Now, my dad on this occasion, he'd come upstairs and for the life of him, I must have felt very comfortable. I said, Daddy, I can take myself out of my body and watch myself sitting in the chair or lying in the bed, and I can jump from wall to wall. Oh, and I, I don't 
have any clothes on when this happened. So, <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to play outside, you know, so there was people playing outside, but I could, I could hear them, you know, all giggling in front of me. And my dad went over to the window and he said, okay then, he said, tell me who's playing outside. And I reeled off everybody that was, that, was, that was playing outside and he stood and his face went very white. And he didn't say a thing. He turned around and he walked out the door. And I lay there and thought, I don't think everybody could do that. Wow. So how did you, I mean, I, I can sense at seven that you built a confidence at an early age because... With that. Yeah. Just with that. Uh -huh. Tell me how you did, how you began the profession. Okay. <laughs> do you really want to know? I do. <laughs> no. And the reason I want, I want to know this is because, you know, I work with a lot of women and um, I really believe and I teach that you should do what you're passionate about. And if you're doing what you're passionate about, with a few little techniques or tips, you can create a livelihood out of it. And so I ask you this story because, one, in the UK, it is not easy to make a profession out of being a psychic, one. Mm -hmm. And when I go through, and we're going to share, I'm going to share some of her um, original business experiences, but you had a drive and a passion that I will make this as a profession, regardless of what anybody says. And I see that through through some of your articles and through your... She, I asked her when she flew over, bring me your scrapbook, bring me anything about your past. And so I want uh, to share your business experience because nobody taught you how to turn your great yeah. gifts into a business. But yet, not only is it a business, but you flourish with your psychic business. And you didn't go to someone and say, tell me how, how do I get into the business of psychic? But I didn't, that's right. And I think that I did a, I did a business course of bookkeeping and things over a few weeks. And it was when I was pregnant with the daughter that died when she was nine months old. Uh -huh. And then I thought, right, okay, I've done that. And I liked reading cards. I taught myself how to read cards. Okay. Are you talking about tarot cards? Tarot cards. A friend of mine, um, she, she knew how to read them. Before she went back, I said, show me a spread. And she showed me a line of um, five cards and laying them down with the old Rider Waite set, which are really horrible and grotesque looking. And I was a single parent on um, income support and in one of the roughest parts, my partner Paul and all, it's a place called Sandside, it's like a mini Glasgow, in fact probably worse. And you know, I was earning about £54 a week and I was working like three and four jobs as well as studying. I taught myself in a single parent to, to read cards and it was, I was studying at the time I went in with the second, I tried to read the book, I've never seen the print in it, it was blacked <laughs> out. And even, you know, in my early 20s, so it made you feel like you had an eyesight problem. So I went into college the next day. I said, oh, I've got a set of cards, you know, and they're like, oh, there were seven of them, do as I read them, do as I read them. And I was too proud to admit that I hadn't read the book. So <laughs> there I was, nobody got to classes that day, two hours, and I did readings every single time. <laughs> and when, when they all, seven people, I mean, so, now I would do so it like five hours. So what she just said is she skipped class and so did everybody else. So did everybody because else. Mm -hmm. She was doing so well at this reading. That well, she, had, like, oh, she hadn't read the book on how to read. I hadn't read the book and I didn't, I was too proud to tell it. Tori and thing, too, too proud to tell anybody. So, of course, I just put it down and I just thought, oh, what, do you, what do you say? What do you say, Lara? The first thing that came into my head. And I mean it literally, and that's what it's about. It's the conscious mind intercepts those thoughts. Your intuition always knows what to do. Always. Has right. somebody ever told you, you're going to do this and you go, actually, I knew that. Right. Yeah, you knew that already, but you just needed told. Right. Then start to look at a psychic in a different way. Perhaps they tell you what you already know. Right. Anyway, so I then started reading and charging people two pound fifty because there's always an exchange that has to take place. Okay, so uh, yeah. then, thank you for that. Two pound fifty. That's about four bucks. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you charge them four dollars to do a reading. Wow, that's pretty yeah. Good. But very very valuable for me because I got experience I wouldn't get anywhere else. Yes. So my experience wasn't learned by a book. <clears throat> it wasn't learned by courses. It was learned by people. By experience. Yeah. Excellent. And for that, there's no price, really.